To be able to treat long COVID, we need to understand what's the root of the symptoms. This is not easy to do since long COVID symptoms are caused by different mechanisms, meaning there will be some treatments that will work for a subset of patients, but not for another group of long haulers. But I think we're very close to pinpointing one of the main causes, and that is our own immune system. More and more evidence is piling up that sometimes our immune response creates autoantibodies, which are antibodies that target healthy cells and tissue. There are many reasons why autoantibodies are synthesized, and one of these reasons is because of how similar SARS-CoV-2 is to some of our proteins. It happens that we have more than 600 human protein regions with sequences identical to parts in the spike protein. The similarity in sequences between the spike protein and human proteins is known as molecular mimicry, which means trouble. If we synthesize antibodies targeting one of these identical regions, the antibodies may also target human proteins by mistake. For example, SARS-CoV-2 has a region identical to thrombopoietin, a protein that regulates platelet count. If we create antibodies that can also attach to thrombopoietin, this would explain why some COVID-19 patients have low platelet counts, a disease known as thrombocytopenia. In fact, some patients' platelet counts improve when treated with drugs used for immune thrombocytopenia, which is kind of a sign that maybe long haulers are developing autoimmune disorders, but hold your horses, it's still not an autoimmune disorder. As the virus spread, scientists started seeing a correlation between hospitalized COVID patients and autoantibodies. The more severe the symptoms and the more hyperstimulated the immune system was, the more autoantibodies someone developed. This makes sense because a hyperstimulated immune system will cause more damage in the nearby tissue. There will be more proteins floating around and our immune system might get confused and create antibodies to target these proteins that are floating around, thinking they are foreign invaders, a mechanism known as bystander activation. Many of the autoantibodies produced by COVID-19 patients are known to play a role in several autoimmune diseases like POTS, GBS, and many more. And while many autoantibodies were developed during the acute phase of COVID-19, new autoantibodies were also developed during the recovery period. If the autoantibodies persist, that increases the chances of developing long COVID. Current data shows that 80% of people recovering from COVID-19 had at least two different types of autoantibodies, three or six months after the infection. But by the 12th month, the quantity of those autoantibodies decreased, which is a good sign, and it reflects that many long haulers are on their way to recovery. More and more studies are finding markers of autoimmune diseases in some of the long COVID patients. For example, one study found two types of autoantibodies circulating in COVID-19 survivors. These autoantibodies target U1 SNRNP and SSBLA proteins, which are known to be linked with persistent autoimmune diseases. If these autoantibodies were still observed at 12 months, which happened to be in 30% of post-COVID patients, then it predicted that those patients were still having persistent fatigue and shortness of breath. These antibodies were not necessarily present during the COVID infection. In 12% of patients, they were detected for the first time one year after COVID infection. The same study also found high levels of TNF-alpha, an inflammation marker that predicted not only the autoantibodies, but also who would show fatigue symptoms. TNF-alpha has been associated with chronic fatigue and rheumatoid arthritis, two autoimmune diseases. So it seems that the inability of the immune system to resolve the inflammation caused by COVID increases the chances of synthesizing these autoantibodies that are likely to be the cause of the persistent symptoms seen in long haulers. Whether long COVID patients showing autoantibodies at 12 months will develop an autoimmune disease is still not clear. Autoimmune diseases also tend to have other components involved, and research is still ongoing. But knowing that a subset of patients with long COVID is due to an autoimmune response does help medical doctors pin down which treatment may help alleviate symptoms. 
And that is why it is so important to understand the cause of the symptoms. If autoantibodies known to play a role in autoimmune diseases are detected in long haulers, then there are treatments that might work. Some medical providers are already exploring several potential treatments for people with autoimmune-like symptoms. Some of the potential treatments include anti-inflammatories, repurposing drugs used for autoimmune diseases, or even plasmapheresis to try to remove harmful autoantibodies circulating in the blood. Maybe even similar to autoimmune diseases, a change in diet and environment may help reduce inflammation and alleviate symptoms. Research in this area is going fast, and there are many clinical trials underway, so hopefully I'll have more information regarding the effectiveness of treatments soon. If you have neurological symptoms after COVID and are trying to understand a bit more about it, you can check this video out.